um, the only reason everybody has to have their own apartment um, in the United States is quite frankly, because that's a way to make more money for whoever's making money off of that arrangement. Yes. And mm. I mean, it's really, for me, it's, it's just as simple as that. You, you had to have been convinced by corporate marketers who use black magic to convince you to spend money you don't have on stupid shit you don't even want and that won't yeah. make you happy. And this arrangement is one of those things. And absolutely. I think that family is incredibly important. Like, uh, I mean, yeah, Gio, you're, that... you're Italian. And right. uh, I, uh, you know, my mom is Jewish. My dad's Russian. So I think that what unites us together, uh, the... Uh. Uh, the uh, Star of David and white. the uh, fa Fascia Alliance is oh, that God. Uh, is that we value having people around us that we can trust and that trust us. And there is something to that that I think, like especially like with an extended family, it's a beautiful thing. The only reason why I'm pushing against certain parts of this, Chad, it doesn't have anything to do with the extended family as it is. It has more to do with what would you say is the level of education, not in the sense of being a bookworm, but in the sense of understanding that it's wrong to hit your wife in the sense of, you know, like that kind of stuff, which has happened throughout history. And, it's in uh, the Bible. Man, but I don't know what you're talking about. So Chad, like when it comes to that part, like where oh, would you, you just say, skipped right over that love. I can't where would you say it. people, <laughs> uh, where would you say people are when it comes to the uh, locals that you've met uh, in India who are, let's say more traditional based. <laughs> uh, well, I'll be honest with you, some of that cut out, but if you're asking about um, domestic abuse being yes. something perhaps um, correlated with the lack of education, um, I don't know about that because, you know, in my own life, I'm not naming any names, but I've personally known like literal scientists who make a salary doing scientific research who um, are also, you know, domestic abusers. So I don't think really that it's quite as simple as that. I yeah. think ultimately it comes down to the kind of person that you are and education might, I don't know, it might show you another way, but if, if you're already a certain kind of person, you're just going to be that way, I think. Well, I'll give you one last example, and I'm sorry to keep uh, you here uh, longer, but you are an amazing uh, speaker, and I'm really appreciative of you being here. Last example I would give with just uh, my family's experience or, you know, like uh, from my dad's side, uh, well, actually, my dad's side had part serf and part were Ukrainians who were never serfs to begin with. But the general idea here is that in Russia, you have you've had a lot of these serfs who were under the thumb of the Mongols and then were under the thumb of the Tsars. And uh, I remember before you were saying that people who are in these prison like conditions that uh, they could develop a kind of a willpower. I would argue, though, that in the case of the Russian serfs, when you had the Decemberist uh, revolt uh, that uh, Pushkin originally wanted to write about before writing War and Peace, the Decemberists who were uh, from the nobility, they, and again, this is like hearsay, whatever, but they were able to withstand a lot of the harsh conditions that came with being exiled because they had a kind of like a, um, uh, like, you can do it attitude when it came to what their family passed on to them, as opposed to the serfs who were already in this very miserable state that they were much, you know, even though you would have thought that they were a lot hardier, they were the ones who succumbed to pressure much more easily because they were always kind of having to kiss somebody else's boot. So when it came to the kind of people that uh, ended up uh, coming from, all of those uh, pressures of being under the Mongols and so on and so forth, I see them acting much more animal-like. And I think that the Soviet Union experiment in Russia has also uh, uh, proven that to be the case, that that is not the kind of state that I want people to be in. And what I, what I want to see is how can we balance out having a great extended family, which I am absolutely for, having traditional things that give people a reason to live, while at the same time not putting people into this very animal-like state of, uh, again, you know, like getting drunk all the time, beating up their kids, beating up their wife, all that, all that, all those bad elements. Like, how can we balance this up? <laughs> mm. Uh, it's a very, um, it's a very difficult um, problem, I think, to think of a solution for, um, which is basically how can a society um, 
better itself and avoid the the vices which you know in a certain sense are actually kind of in human nature like um yeah you know the yeah i mean it is the natural thing to to lose your temper and to lash out it takes a certain level of repression to not do that so how exactly do you get that you know we have the idea of well, we just have to educate everybody. Well, we've never been more educated, I think, and um, I, I haven't seen the the fruits of of that being positive. Um, so it's not it's not just as simple as education. Um, you might say, well, it's tradition. Um, you might say it's religion. Um, I, I really don't know, but what I can tell you is that even if one does not realize it, one's um, ability to deal with the difficulty of human life inherently has to be rooted in some sort of um some sort of almost religious ideal of how thing how things are going to right. get better and that's exactly what progress is giving us right but um i think it's uh it's going to have to be replaced by something else i think like to disprove what love is saying i think that um when it comes to like this picture that uh it's funny there was this tweet that went viral about some like i don't know which clothing store in the mall like one of these big you know mall like women's clothing stores had a whole row of like uh trad like trad wojak dresses like the trad, trad oh thought. yeah i remember those yeah. yeah and and all of a sudden you had people like this is like in Texas, you know, this is like Gilead, like instead of knowing, seeing that it's like basically no, this is like that book, what, Handmaiden's Tale. Yeah. Yeah. Instead of seeing it's like a Instagram, like cottage core trad thought LARP. Right. So the response, the gutter response reveals it's kind of like when people voted the li for the liberals again here in Canada, because they have this idea that a traditional society means that uh, my precious sacred abortion is not going to happen and that, you know, my husband gets to beat me and shit. They don't realize that, okay, first of all, domestic violence hasn't changed one bit in terms of mass secularization or urbanization. In fact, in some cases, it's gotten worse in certain big cities. And also, I would say that um, there was always chivalry laws. But even besides that, the problem is when you start to place these sort of like progressive edicts upon tradition, like even just living in a more traditional like uh, household with an extended family, not like the nuclear family. It's, it's really interesting how people react because when you say that, well, it's going to limit my human freedom, then that itself is another like mystification or abstraction. But also I would say that when it comes to, uh, what happens is it's very similar to what Derek Jensen was saying about how abuse becomes more complex and second order and ameliorated and it becomes hidden. So for instance, we can't, uh, we can legislate away overt like wife beating for instance, but now abuse comes in like more like woke progressive packaging. Now it becomes like, you can't kink shame, right? Like you can do sex work, only fans, you can become, you know, BDSM. It's like you can fetishize your pathological need to abuse women, but now it's woke and now it's king culture. Now it's subversive because Marcuse bought us the idea that, you know, if we, if we just like have enough sex, then capitalism will be destroyed or some shit like that. It's like whatever, whatever yeah. yellow girl. Well, those are, just, well, those are also yeah. definitely, those are also extremes what i'm well, talking yeah, about what, what i'm talking yeah. about when it comes to the level that the people are in right now i don't think this is the level of people that either you geo or you chad would want to hang around like we're talking with people who are just completely in a drunken stupor most of the time and they're still around believe me like in uh, brooklyn here like around brighton beach there's there's definitely people who are like that so when it comes to that kind of mentality that i think they've inherited over the generations onwards from being like this uh surf class and again it did, doesn't mean that there wouldn't be brilliant people that come out from there well, like, monkeys uh, only like masturbate anton, in captivity love, anton so. uh, anton chekhov for example <laughs> anton chekhov's uh uh, family were serfs and he was an absolutely brilliant writer so it does not mean 
at all that there wouldn't be brilliant people coming out from those conditions. But at the same time, it's like if there were conditions that created this kind of like animal like lack of self control that is, I think, far beyond whatever, let's say, ideals. I hope people in the Middle Ages in Europe were able to live up to. Like, if it's so far lower down that neither of us would ever want to have these people in our homes, then that's what I want to avoid, just so I'm being yeah. clear about what exactly I'm talking about here. Well, Machas, I wonder why that's true, that statistic. I wonder... Could it could it be because they're never mind? I'm not. Gonna... <laughs> All right. Well, finally, in okay. Britain, I wonder what demographic of people they're bringing in in Britain to make that statistic true. Much as I wonder. But uh, well, we 